Today I'm going to be describing the spectrum of different copyright licenses that are available. There's a difference between copywritten work and work under the Creative Commons license, and usage is different. I'm going to be talking about the different elements that you will find within the Creative Commons licensing. I'll be describing how you can find the different elements and which ones will be applying to your work, be it, you know, an image, a book, music, a video, all of these things can be covered under the Creative Commons license. This slide shows you the spectrum of the different licenses available. This is how we have works protected by something called copyright, which I'm sure you're all familiar. If you want to use someone's work, you need to ask for permission. It is sometimes tough for people um, who want to use an, an original work and then add parts to it. They have to work within the confines of the copyright. There's sort of a new revolution happening with this Creative Commons licensing because it allows a creator to choose between different licensing. And that will also allow people to share and reuse their work without asking for permission. On the other end of the spectrum from copyright is public domain, which means no one actually owns that information. Anyone is eligible to use that material freely without gaining permission of the creator. <clears throat> they don't need to follow any specific licensing regulations in public domain. So I just wanna do a quick review of what copyright actually is. If you create something, you have the right to protect your work and you have the right to protect it from being adapted and performed and reused out in the public. We have copyright laws to encourage people to create new works without the fear of someone stealing without giving credit or without financially, uh, without any financial remuneration. So it's important that people feel their work can be created. The copyright is owned by a variety of different people. It could be the creator themselves. It could be an organization that owns the copyright. It could be an employer, for example. If you, if you create something at work while you're on the time clock, then your employer would be the owner of that copyright. And if someone wants to use that work, they need to gain permission from the copyright owner. After 1978, works created after 1978, the copyright lasts for the length of the creator's life plus 70 years after the creator has passed away. Sometimes a creator will state in their will that they want the copyright benefits to be given to a specific person or organization. And an example of this is writers and artists. They may designate that to someone in their will. So these are the different kinds of materials that are protected under copyright laws. They are original works of something that is a tangible medium. This includes things like literary and artistic works, translations, adaptations, uh, different collections of work. It could be applied art, industrial design and models, computer software and, so and websites are also protected. There are other things as well. The list is very long, but you can register your copyright, your work with the Library of Congress. There's an application that's filled out and there are certain regulations that you have to follow in order to have your copyright work registered with the Library of Con Congress. But that enables you to defend yourself in court if someone actually uh, plagiarizes your work, you have already registered it with the Library of Congress and so you can actually get uh, uh, protection in the court of law through this <clears throat> copywriting. So Creative Commons has been established 
in a way to avoid these copyright issues. It's a way to save time and money and effort. The creators can decide for themselves how they want their work to be shared and used through the different choices that are available of licensing. Other people can also decide to share your work or add to it and build onto it if you choose that option. This new approach promotes openness a collaboration and a shared creativ creativity. It helps with discoverability and dissemination of your work as well. Creative Commons works are more highly cited than other works. And this is because they're easier to find. We have at least 1.4 billion Creative Commons licensed work currently. Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to building a globally accessible public commons of knowledge and culture. It's part of a movement that's been termed the copy left movement. It's considered an alternative to the traditional copyright that we follow. This movement supplies licenses to creators and allows them to share their work more openly. These licenses work within the existing copyright laws that we have. And there are about six Creative Commons licenses that only apply to works that are copyrighted currently. There's no registration needed to be a part of this. So now I'd like to explain a little bit about the elements of Creative Commons licensing. As you can see by this icon, it says CC-BY attribution. This means that you need to give credit to the original creator or you need to cite the original creator when you borrow or share their work. It's part of all six of the Creative Commons licenses. It's the most common one that we see. And you need to show gratitude and give credit where credit is due. This picture is the symbol used for non-commercial use. means that it can only be for non-commercial work. It can't be used for promotion. And you can't sell and, and gain any income from this license. And it's based on the use. It's not based on the user. Another element, here you see the equal sign, means no derivatives, I mean you cannot create an adaptation without permission. It is permissible to make small changes, like changing the formatting or making minor changes like spelling, but you can't do anything that would actually alter um, the nature of the work. This one is called Share Alike. Any adaptation made to the work needs to be shared in this Shared Alike license. In the creation of a new work, it incorporates a Share Alike work, a similar license um, to a more liber the liberal license of CCBY, and they are used in conjunction. So here you can see all six of the Creative Commons license and they're as they're listed by symbol. If you see this symbol, it means that you only need to give a citation or credit to the original creator. If you see these symbols together, it means you need to give attribution or, or cite them and also share alike without making any changes to the original work. These symbols mean that you need to give attribution and you cannot use it to gain any income. If you see these, it means that you must, you must give attribution, but you can, cannot make any adaptations to the work. There are three conditions like 
attribution, you can't sell it. You must be able to do share alike, or you must cite. You cannot gain an income from it. You can't make in any adaptations to the, to the material. And lastly, there's public domain. These are works that are not protected under any sort of copyright. Copyright is waived or it's been expired. So this means that you cannot use a Creative Commons license because it's public domain and everyone is, is equally uh, able to access it. You'll see this image has a particular box around it. That allows individuals to identify that something is housed within the public domain. It's typically applicable to older works. It's commonly used by cultural heritage institutions, places like archives, museums, and libraries. This image is not a license. It's simply an indicator that the work is believed to be in the public domain. However, keep in mind, if you take a work that's in the public domain and adapt it, creating something new from it, then you would be able to apply for a Creative Commons license. Sometimes you'll see uh, two other types of notations that indicate a work is available within the public domain. So the creator in this case is waiving any rights under traditional copyright. Users are not required to adhere to any of the conditions nor provide attribution, although it's considered good practice to do so anyway. Here you'll see a scale of license from more free at the top to least amount of freedom at the bottom. You may have heard of OER, which is Open Education Resources. That's based on a movement where people have created educational materials for a number of reasons. Things like textbooks, have become very expensive in recent years. And open educational resources would allow instructors to modify materials for use in their classes by their students. And this could be very beneficial for those of us who teach deaf and hard of hearing students. So you may want to look into some of the OER resources. Fair use applies to Creative Commons works in the same way that copyright does. So you can use a small part of a Creative Commons piece of work without following the license if it falls under the fair use aspect. And here's a link that will allow you to find a form to determine if a piece of work is applicable to the fair use under Creative Commons. And you can take a look at that later because I'll be sharing the PowerPoint with all of the links in it. You have to consider a number of things when you're thinking about licensing. So you have to own the copyright of your work in order to apply for a Creative Commons license. You have to make sure you're not using the work of another person. Work that's created by an employee during the course of their employment while they're on the clock is typically owned by the employing company. Creative Commons licenses once they're obtained, are irrevocable. So they stay in place forever.
you need to be specific about what content you are licensing. So there could be stipulations that say something like accept where otherwise indicated. This presentation is licensed by CC-BY. You don't want to restrict others from reusing the work. Especially if that prevents them from using the work if the license permits it. So file formats and digital logs would not be permissible. Here you'll see the online license creator link. And there you can copy XHTML text for your website that will embed the CCL license into your website. So here I put together an example of how a Creative Commons works in everyday usage. Say you have Ava who takes a photograph of her pet, her cat in particular, surrounded by flowers. She decides to upload that to Flickr using a Creative Commons license, which would allow anyone to use the photograph and make changes to it, as long as Ava, the original creator, is given credit. Then John sees Ava's photograph of her cat and downloads it to his computer, where he remixes the photo into an animated GIF and it becomes Ava's cat bouncing around with flower petals falling through the air. When he posts that gift to his website, he gives Ava credit for the original photograph. Linking to both her Flickr account and to the Creative Commons license that she has chosen for her work. He also adds a Creative Commons license to his own remixed GIF. From there, you'll see Sue has written a short piece of music that she plans to post on her own YouTube channel. She sees John's GIF of the bouncing cat with flowers and decides to use it in the background video with her piece of music. She posts her song on YouTube with the animated GIF playing for the video and gives proper credit to both John and Ava. Each of the three have benefited from using Creative Commons licensing for their work. Now, Sue also applies a Creative Commons license to her third piece of work. So what's involved in the attribution? It's quite similar to citations. You need to include the title, the name of the author, a link to the original if it's available, a link to the specific license, the copyright notice for any work if it exists. And the Open Attribution Builder link will give you some examples. And it will create the attribution for you with all the necessary components. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about what's considered adapted or derivative works. Adaptation means creating something new from an original copyrighted piece of work. And the resulting work is based on or derived from the original. So for example, it could be a film based on a book. It could be a translation of a book from one language to another. 
which we probably do quite a bit here at NTID. It could be an open book chapter that weaves together multiple open resources. It could be syncing a musical work with a moving image. Or it could be modifying a photo by cropping and applying filters or other additional elements. Here's an example of an in image adaptation. The original photograph is on your left. The adaptation is on the right. The reason it's an adaptation is because it was a change to the original photograph. It was zoomed up larger and cropped. In addition to that, there was some text added to the photo. So how would you license an attribute correctly for this adaptation? The easiest thing would be to look at the original Creative Commons license, which is a BYSA 2.0. So the original creator would choose that license. And then you'll see below the proper way to credit that. Deer Tick Close Up by Professor X is licensed under CC BY SA 4.0. It is a derivative of the title of the image used under CC BY SA 2.0. Here's another example of an adaptation that a professor has prepared readings for his class, Ways to Prevent Lyme Disease. He's cut and pasted content from a number of OER, Open Educational Resources, and woven them together to create a new piece of work. That is an example of an adaptation or a remix. So how would this professor then properly license and attribute this remix? You'll see the title, Preventing Lyme Disease by Professor X under CCBY NCSA 4.0 is a derivative of, and then each of the articles is listed. I'd like to explain a little bit about what is not considered adapted or a derivative works. If you make any changes to something that is of a te technical nature, like format shifting or converting from digital format to a physical copy, that's not considered adaptive or derivative. Things like fixing spelling or punctuation errors. Reproducing and putting Creative Commons works together within a collection. You know, for example, compiling essays with different authors. You could also have an image with text um, on a blog or a PowerPoint or an article. And also using an, an excerpt of someone's work that shows a new idea. And also, you know, provides examples. It's not building a new original work in this case. It's just uh, adding to a work from an excerpt. An example of this would be collections. There may be a professor who is teaching a course about different diseases like Lyme disease and has made a collection from several articles that she has found. Um, and she wants her entire class to be able to read them. So there would be an introduction for each article. This, this would be labeled as a collection. So the teacher would have to cite that collection of articles. She would say the hosts of tick disease, carrying, ticks carrying Lyme disease, spirochete uh, course packet by Professor X 
is licensed under CCBY 4.0. This excludes the third party readings in the packet, which are licensed individually. So here you can see is an example with an image and there's um, a caption. And this is something that the professor may want to use and show during her class. She didn't make any changes to the image. She's just using the original citation for this. If you would like to explore a little bit more about these concepts, please look at this link because it will be a more in-depth description. I wanted to remind you that RIT has many open resources. These are places where you can post your own articles and your own work. This is an opportunity for the rest of the world to have access to your work. There's RIT Scholar Works. There's open access journals at RIT and open access books at RIT. And these are links that allow people to see our work throughout the community. There are many places that you can go to to find different images, different videos, articles and books. So there's an example, I'd like to show you an example of doing a Google image search, for example. Imagine I'm looking for an image of a tiger. I'm going to show you how I would search for images of a tiger. So if I click on tools, you see here the button that says tools. As you can see, it says usage rights. If I click on this drop down, I can click on Creative Commons license. And these will be all the images that are covered under the Creative Commons license. Suppose I want to use this image. It's a good idea to double check and see what the license allows. Here you can see a description of the license. It says you are free to share and remix this image as long as you cite and share alike. I'll stop sharing my screen now. I'll go back to the PowerPoint. Here's a list of resources for you to explore at your own leisure when you have time. There are so many places to find free images. But here again, you need to check the licensing to see what usage is allowed. There are also free art images. And here is the educational materials I was speaking of before. You can find free articles and books on these links, as well as Creative Commons videos. And here is a list of music. I'd like to thank all of you for your attendance today. I hope that I've given you some new and interesting things to think about with regard to open education resources and ways that you can utilize them in your teaching. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye now.